this is worse than the book of Boba Fett biker gang. Oh, don't say that. No, I don't know if anything's worse than that. <laughs> <laughs> Even worse than Kenobi. Mm, what? No, no, oh, no, not, not at all. No. What no. in the galaxy happened to Star Wars? Anyone who who uses Book of Boba Fett as a measuring stick is not no not a good thing. They're not rational. They're they have a gas leak in their home. He's not done yet. Din received the Boba treatment and is now just a sidekick in his own show. I mean, they specifically Uh, stated that the that he's not the only Mandalorian. Sure, (laughs) I mean, sure. (laughs) That is a one star review from IMDb. Welcome, we are Spoilers Intended, a podcast about series and films. I'm Stephen, joined as always by Andrew. Greetings, I don't know the Mandalorian way to say hi, so. <laughs> and Ryan. I think they just shoot at each other and say, this is the way. <laughs> so they just shoot into a lake, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> and Ryan. I'm here too, I shot into the lake. He's also here, shooting into the lake, and we are also joined by a very special guest, dialing in from the Outer Realm, a separate time zone, if you will. <laughs> Of, how do those work? No one knows. No one knows how time zones work. Our very own Mandalorian Merc, general or general local Star Wars nerd who knows way too much about Star Wars, Nick. Yes, I am and will remain Nick. You are. Fact, <laughs> no Nick. matter what they try to do. No matter what they do to him. Well, welcome, Nick. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, boys. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for taking a little little slice out of your day here. Yeah. So we just finished watching the finale. Season eight. season eight. Season eight. Episode eight. <laughs> season, season three. three. Episode eight. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just I made the extended Star Wars universe long real quick. <laughs> Titled The Return. Titled The Return. Yes. So we're going to kick this off. This is going to be a different format from what would be our normal episodes. Uh, so we're going to kick this off and just uh, go ahead and be warned. There are spoilers everywhere beginning right now. Yeah. Uh, Snape kills Dumbledore. Anyways... <laughs> So you got to get one gotta in get there. It you got to say gotta what, get it in what there. the spoilers are for. You can't. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to talk about that finale first. Just a little, 10 because minutes we've done, tops. Yeah, we've, we've been done doing recaps. This for weeks. Mm-hmm. In case you haven't caught it, you know, we've been doing recaps of, of each episode. So if, if we don't talk about a specific episode you wanted to hear us drill down on, you can pop over into the feed yep. and listen to one of those. Yeah. So let's, uh, let's hear some opinions here on episode eight. Okay, so I'll just going to go ahead and start, and then I'll just open up the floor here, because I have a question for everyone. Oh, boy. Okay. Just imagine this episode oh, with John is. Williams' music over it. Oh, it'd be so much better. Yeah. Actual, yeah, you're absolutely right. Actual Star Wars music. I, like in Specifically the, the fight. The, yeah. The fight with, with Moff Gideon, both with Din and with um, uh, Bo. Bo-Katan. Bo. Man, like, if, if Bo ignited that Darksaber, and then Gideon ignites his polearm, whatever. Yeah, off, and Duel of Fate starts off. Duel of Fate starts off. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't realize just how much I needed horns until you said it. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, because it's one of those things where, like, you have these really emotional moments, these big moments that we've been mm-hmm. building up towards essentially all season, um, yeah. you know, in, in roundabout ways sometimes. But you have these big moments, and whenever they're not punctuated by music that we all know and love, like, whenever Groku is saving them with the Force over, like, the like the big firestorm, yeah. you put Yoda's theme or the Force theme in there, just even subtly. Yeah. Like, you have such a better moment there. They didn't even really hit the Mandalorian theme in any of those scenes. That could have been another easy out if, if, like, for some reason they just don't want to use you know, the old stuff, just play like even like hints or motifs from the Mandalorian theme just to get me hyped up. Like if that, that that, even that reveal, like you come up as you like look into the bubble and the firestorm and it's just, yeah, even that would work for that moment. Yes. Uh, And that's, that's not really a shot at uh, Joseph Shirley, who is our composer for this season using, obviously using uh, works by uh, Ludwig Gordonson. Ludwig Gordonson. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, As well, because the, the Mandalorian theme is still there. Yeah. Ryan? Uh, it, it was an okay episode. I, I feel like with this season specifically, it felt like last episode and this episode is like when we finally kind of distilled into like what we're trying to go for mm-hmm. this season. A lot of it just felt like side quests that didn't have anything going on. Now, mm-hmm. this though felt like this could have been stretched out to like a few episodes. This felt almost like overly 
compact Jammed into in. like like they could have taken I feel like the last two episodes of the season and made a season of TV out of that and I think that uh, would have been more set maybe not all I know we go that far you could you could make this this could this could have been three episodes easily or four yeah I, it felt like there was a lot going on and none of it was necessarily bad some of the some of the flying around uh, fighting scenes were kind of like chaotic and hard to track like where things were unlike earlier in the season where we had like really good dog fights and they really communicated visually you know how many you know, people were in play where they were at. And this one is just like, there's such a swarm that you're just kind of like have to let it wash over you, you know, sometimes, but we did get some cool action here and there with like the dark saber and that stuff. I did. I'm always frustrated with Grogu though, because we've seen him in previous season use his force powers to greater degree than he does now. And I'm like, not sure if they're trying to do that to walk it back narratively or if, no, like, I th- um, I don't know what the the reason is because I felt like he well, I don't know I think that it's it's more that because he did spend time with Luke mm-hmm. and he has more control over it so he's trying to be l- like less like throwing like you know a cannon at a gunfight right but well, I feel like when you're in an emergency situation take the limiter off let's go you know like this well, is not the time well, to, the, the, that's actually the thing is that like he has his own built in limiter right he he yeah. is n- not terribly mobile. So just like Yoda, he's using the force a lot to execute his mobility. Yeah. And so he's not able to really, really reach out and grab anyone with the force the way we'd expect like a really strong force user to use to do. Uh, and it's, it's literally because he's using so much of his effort to move around. Well, and, so and, 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 de- it, and you definitely see that in attack of the clones and revenge of the Sith, mm-hmm. where the second that Yoda really has to focus on using the force, he is completely immobile. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Where, like, like, especially with like Obi Wan and Anakin, you see them, you know, do it using it and also fighting at the same time. Right. Generally, most of, the, almost all the time. Yeah. Just because like Yoda is just like he has short legs. Sure. Like. <laughs> yeah, and it's it's kind of like an old EU thing that like Darth Vader at any time that he's in the suit, his maximum is only like seventy percent power because he's using so much of the Force to deaden his own pain. So, like, it's long established that, like, you can be using the Force in several different ways, uh, and and using the Force to increase his mobility is otherwise robbing his, quote-unquote, yeah. mana pool right. to use the Force in, in, in offensive ways. Well, see, I was going to say, like, we've seen him use the Force in big bursts, like in Season 1 where he lifts the, the rhino. That's yeah. the ma- the thing I'm specifically but, thinking about. But he was like that. passes out after that effort, and if yeah. you're in for a prolonged fight, you don't want to do something big that may not solve all of your problems and then pass out, right? So yeah. I, I feel like that's probably some of the training coming through, where it's like, you got to use this deliberately where you can maintain yourself, you know, again, you're not having your to mobil- pass out. mobility, yeah. you're not just rendering yourself useless. Well, in, in particular, like the force bubble that he creates, like that has to take a massive amount right. of, of yeah. energy that, you know, essentially like that is his mana pool at that point. And, yeah. and that's the last resort to like, you know, we just can't die here. Yeah. I just, just for me, it was a tiny bit frustrating with that fight scene because it felt like, they could have choreographed it and made it a little cooler, oh, I think. For, oh, like, I don't know. I thought it was actually kind of good. Kinda, okay, I, I agree to disagree. <laughs> this is my I, also, I also really love that fight scene. You can see Grogu start to slide around on the floor mm-hmm. the same way that Din and Bo-Katan are doing. Now, mm-hmm. I did like that part. Yeah. I just I just wanted yeah. a little bit more out of it. Like, it was just one room with them in there. I don't know. Yeah, so, I mean, there were some... Oh, sorry. Uh, I was just going to I was gonna get a dig here Go at, ahead. at Last Jedi. You could almost <laughs> say that this is, a, my part. this is a better choreographed fight scene than the one in the throne room <laughs> one could say that well i, I mean, probably wouldn't they had say to that. edit out <laughs> ray dying or being stabbed in the back yeah sure so i was gonna I was <laughs> a minor gonna take thing, the shot yes. here of of nick how many praetorian guards are in the throne room scene in your memory in my memory yeah. i want to say it was like Five. Okay, we all we all separately came up with about five to six so yeah ray and kylo with lightsabers, fight five to six Praetorian guards in a pretty epic duel. Mm-hmm. What if a half-trained, half-pint force user and a normal <laughs> man with guns could fight three of them? Well, okay, so these are like Gen <laughs> One Praetorian guards, right? So yeah. these are not these are not cream of the crop, right? These well, so, these guys are. <laughs> we were tell them our theories. We were definitely joking that <laughs> that when Gideon made the request to Hux, Hux was like, "Yeah, I'll send you some Praetorian guards." So. 
who uh, who are the washouts? Who are the, the worst <laughs> we can find that we can give him and technically fulfill this request? I mean, that's actually not a terrible strategy, though, if he's trying to gain as much power as possible. He sends, mm-hmm. you know, I'll say lesser lesser guards or lesser bodyguards in the in the event that you know they possibly don't defend Moff Gideon and he dies. Hey, you could just step into that power void. There right? you go. Yeah. yeah. Little uh, political maneuvering there, maybe we machinations. Maybe, we maybe give yeah. them too much credit. Well, yeah, right yeah, now. I mean, yeah, that's kind of the thing. Is like these are we're not expecting these Praetorian guards to be the the best of the best. These are these are basically hand me downs from from someone that he requested. Yeah, you know, and that kind of thing. And uh, you know, so there is a little and, bit of leeway there. And we're still Nick. Correct me if I'm wrong here. Thirty ish years from the first order, from the beginning of the sequels. Uh, we should be 20-ish. 20-ish? Okay. Somewhere in yeah, that realm. Yeah, 20-ish. So we, we still have plenty of time for the Praetorian Guard Academy to graduate. You know, a couple, <laughs> couple of fresh crops here. They learned from this. Yeah. They were like, guys. <laughs> yeah. These guys did too. So, so next big question here for the finale. Mm-hmm. Is Moff Gideon dead? I mean, he, he got burned to a crisp. Now, he did have, did like, we all see the a clone. Body? Did we see a body? We did I, not. I mean, and he was wearing the, the, the Beskar armor. RoboCop Beskar yeah. armor. So... I mean, the the answer is that it doesn't matter because clones. you didn't see his body. You also didn't see any of the clones' bodies that yep. he said were dead as well. Oh yeah, the answer like, is it just does not matter. It's just going to be back if they want to be back. There could be a bunch of oily Gideons just running around in the hallways <laughs> trying Slippery, to learn how to speak English. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but but that's the thing is like um, like him like him perishing with this um, cap not even a frigate. It's not a capital starship. It's like this a free, light, light cruiser. Light cruiser, you know, crashing mm-hmm. into his um, uh, his base or whatever. Yeah. It was pretty cool. I love that. Yeah, sequence. I like we that. Were, we that were idea. calling that that was gonna. We I think we were actually rooting for him to get like Grogu to force push him off into the path of the cruiser. Oh, that'd be so <laughs> yeah, cool. That's so <laughs> good. So, me and Sam have literally accomplished that maneuver in a Star Wars RPG game. Where like there was a point of interest on a planet, we didn't have anything big enough to take it down, but we had a spare cruiser that we just like hijacked, <laughs> a and so we're like, well, I don't know, let's people. just put all sublights to full and push it into the planet and see what happens. <laughs> and so like I I loved that, even though it's kind of stupid because like where did all the Tie Fighters go? But <laughs> I loved that because like a thing a thing that me and my friends made up on a whim is the finale of the Mandalorian season three. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I mean, it was it was a really cool sequence, but the yeah, I do agree is like, where did all the Tie Fighter Tie Interceptors go? Like, they saw this bo- guy going down. They're like, I'm not messing with this. It. He's yeah. dead, right? Yeah, we did our job. Yeah. Well, and then like, I love how you know, like all of the gauntlets and the Mandal- Mandalorians and stuff like go into the into the the storm or clouds or whatever you want to call it, and then mm. all the interceptors just come like right back out, and they just completely like, miss each like other. Two ships passing in the night. Yeah, yeah, I mean, like I get the you know your sensors are down when you're going through there, but like that seems a little. They almost ran into each other. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Was, yeah. I don't know. Little, uh, it could have been perspective, though. They could have been like a long wait. You know, like I don't think that was perspective. I don't. That yeah. was, yeah. Okay. I, don't, I think they just didn't care <laughs> in the same manner that they didn't care about you know like where was Grogu at the end of season or episode seven and at the start of episode eight. He's just inside the base. Oh where yeah, Din's been captured. He like, was on the other side did, with Bo Katan, yeah, like, and then all of a sudden he's over here? there in the hallway. The Force is the answer always. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I, I think that's about as close to an answer as you can get beyond just, you know, we needed Grogu to be with Din. Yeah. What we really needed was for Gro- for Mecha Grogu to get a gun. <laughs> and it didn't happen. I don't, I think that that would go against some of the, the mantra you, of the show. Can you imagine though, like them storming down a hall and he's just blasting away. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. <laughs> <laughs> like he hot wires it so like the circuit that hits yes also fires yes. so it has to yes yes <laughs> yes yes, yes. yes. Uh, okay so Nick I actually have a question here so the R four droid had jump rockets R five R five R five shows yeah. some respect R five yeah had, you put respect yeah. on his name when you say R five he had jump rockets is that a is that a common thing with Astromex now I know we've seen it with Chopper and Rebels and we've seen it with obviously R two D two from uh, Revenge of the Sith, and then later in like Clone Wars and that kind of thing. Um, why? Uh, so those are, I mean, uh, as far as any time you need a droid to go high or low, yeah, they they show up. I mean, you can buy them. They're an accessory that you can buy at like Galaxy's Edge and bolt them onto the side of the droid that you build. So oh, really? I, 
Relatively common, yeah. Oh, okay. So Din went to Galaxy's Edge, got some, yeah. <laughs> bolted them onto well, R5, and he's good I mean, go. it's it's actually, I mean, because it came from, I can't remember her name, but the, the mechanic on Tatooine, it's not mm. it's not uncommon. Yeah, it's yeah. It, it wouldn't Thank be you. out of the question that he would be modded with those. Yeah, she's in their team yeah. for anyways. Yeah. 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 Well, also, I mean. Well, I like, think back to uh, the Phantom Menace, right? You, the first time you see all of those droids, they're like skittering across the hull of a ship, making repairs and stuff. They're designed to do work in in it's environments that will require yeah. thrusters. Well, also, I mean, it's not a pra- like any R R two R five unit is just utterly defeated by steps, right? So, like, how do you get around <laughs> that? And rocket boosters. I mean, R two uses steps in uh, in um, the original trilogy at least twice. I mean, like you, you see him like like put up and then kind of like yeah, push himself he kinda, up he and that does kind of the, thing. The, the, the tripod walk. Yeah, up that there, was yeah. obviously before they figured out that you know they could actually put jet packs in these things. But that's well, fine. also you have to conserve your jet fuel, unless you're in this episode. <laughs> unless you're in this episode, and then everyone. <laughs> yeah, unless unless you don't have to, unless. Yeah. Unless you can just fly into the lower <laughs> orbit <laughs> of the <laughs> <space. laughs> yeah. edge of space. Yeah. yeah, that was hilarious. He's like, I got the jetpack. I'm going to go help P- or like, I'll go get the fleet. And then he's just like, I'm just going to go to low orbit. Right. I would have, I would have <laughs> loved it if it was like, you know, there's ice forming on the outside of his suit and everybody's like, what are you doing? That's never been attempted. And he's yeah, like, well, I'm going to try for it. You it's know? kind and of it's like, like the, the Iron Man move taking the, oh, yeah. the, yeah. the yeah, move yeah. back through the portal or whatever. <laughs> Instead, it's just like, I got it. <laughs> just right up there. So okay, so I have to I have to bring up just the very much like fairy tale ending that we kind of had here for like the whole season. It in, was kind in, of a happy. It ending. feels it feels like a series finale. It, it does. does, yeah. But we know that season four is coming out. So like yes. season what? four and a movie. And, oh god, and, and a movie. movie? Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. I didn't know there. Was yeah, a movie it was announced at celebration that Dave Filoni will be directing a. Mandoverse movie that's going to wrap up the storylines for Bo, Din, Ahsoka, uh, Boba and Boba Fett. Yeah. yeah. So, wow. so basically, that's going to hit after presumably Ahsoka gets one or two seasons, maybe, and then we finish Mando season four. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think that the it's a little bit conjecture just because it's so early, no one really knows anything. But I think they're they're pushing for the Mandoverse movie to come out. 2026. So what you're saying is it's going to be like Rogue Squadron. It's going to get shelved indefinitely. <laughs> <laughs> no, Boy, this, this I would really channel. like Lucasfilm to stop telling us things until they have like film on until wax. Until it's happening. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that yeah. would be nice. It would be nice. But so, it, it really did feel like a, like a series finale kind of did. end. Because yeah. everything I mean, kind of had like a nice little bow to it. And, we got, you know, we got he, Din out on the ranch. <laughs> 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 Sorry, we got to be specific now. Din could be either either of them. Jaren. We got Jaren on it. Yes. Yeah. Out on a ranch. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, they're they're adopted father and son now, which I thought already happened, but I was probably thinking of it wrong. I guess found. I guess I considered foundling as like See, his foundling kid. is when you're yeah. adopted by the cult. Ah. Uh, and then yeah. that individual has to deign to adopt you as well. I yeah. don't know. There's and I'm gonna like, I'm gonna get out in front of this. I have no idea why he's been Grogu and not Grogu Jaren. No clue. Don't I don't have, know why that is. You don't have a, oh, yeah. An answer for us in Mandoa or anything like that? Absolutely not. I got nothing for that. <laughs> so when I was going through the one star reviews, there are a couple that I read where I was like, this dude is in the Mandalorian Mercs because he's so mad about like I thought we were gonna get get more Mandalorian culture. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. If he was in the Mandalorian Mercs, he would absolutely have way more apostrophes in his name. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't read his name, so. Uh, oh, okay. It's De Aaron. De- uh, <laughs> my eye calls. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think of some other other moments. Uh, now, I know, I know, Ryan, you did mm-hmm. mention, like, kind of like the jetpack fight or whatever. Yeah. And we're going to ignore just the fuel cost of, of what this is, of them, like, flying stuff. I did enjoy... Yeah. Um, a lot of the choreography that we could actually kind of discern what was happening. Right. When we, yeah. when you get away from the big pile of flying bodies and mm-hmm, we have right. just like the armor hammering down, or <laughs> I, uh, I love that she breaks a hammer uh, to a gunfight. Well, I mean, yeah. Hey, we have. Yeah, no, the the armor and bow both doing like their signature move in yeah. mid air combat was choice. Oh, yeah. it's really cool. Well, I yeah. just love how it's like the armor is just like, what's that? Blaster proof armor. Good thing I brought a hammer. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, well, you know, you know those hammers are made out of Beskar because that's well, the only well, way to that, like the hammers were made for hammering Beskar. Yeah. Like, this is her time. Yeah. Uh, 
I liked uh, Bo's like slide too, where she was like, oh, like, and she like, goes under the platform the to like hide behind the platform and then rocket them from. That oh yeah, was that good. was that was choice. That was probably the best moment of the whole fight right there, where she did that. Yeah. Yeah, the um, so that was good. I actually liked mm-hmm. the. I thought the fight between um, Din and um, Moff Gideon and then Bo was actually really well choreographed. See, mm-hmm. I like the initial fight. Is kind of like the appetizer, right? Yeah. And they're kind of just slamming bodies around. I think once Bo enters the fight, and then we put Den in with the Praetorian guards. I think those two individual fights were better than the start. Yeah, just. Because there's just more going on. There's just more choreogra- choreography to do, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, especially once you do, like, the sword versus staff. Like, it's a very classic martial art kind of thing going it is, on yeah. here. Mm-hmm. Ryan had something. Can we, talk about, can we talk about the energy door sequence? Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, it was, it was because out it starts game. out really strong, right? It, you've got easily identifiable tension, yep. stakes. I don't want to fight all these dudes at once. And so immediately, my first thought was like, okay, R5 is going to open all of these, and Dan's going to be like, oh, crap. Yeah, that would have been great. All right, here we go. <laughs> and just have to, like, man mode yeah. the whole thing. Droids, <laughs> and so that doesn't happen. It's nice. The plan works. He's fighting these dudes two at a time. The knife fight is brutal. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah and, like, it. awesome. The, the, the choreography uh, on that is so good. Yeah. We had a couple and of then he gets, brutal moments for Star Wars, right? In this, in yeah, this there, there's a couple knife kills that were like, like, that's like kinda, woo, you don't see those often. Kinda, kinda, oh, yeah, kind of yeah. dark for Star Wars. So. And then he gets he gets towards the end of the of the sequence, right? And it's just the one guy who has a shield and a blaster, and then <laughs> picks up a shield and a blaster, and they like crab fight three feet away from each other <laughs> where they just yeah. got their shields and their blasters and they just pew, 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 pew and nothing happens. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I did like that it escalated where, you know, you, you he starts out unarmed, then he gets a knife, then he gets a baton, then he gets a blaster, then he gets the shield. And like, oh, very presumably, yeah, right, they took away all of his Mandalorian gadgets when they put him into custody, right? Like the little, yes. the, the mini missiles. They didn't and, remove, right, you know, we, the we, impenetrable we, armor, which right, would be a again. bad thing if he gets <laughs> yeah. free, but you know. Yeah. Um, but it was very much like straight out of a video game, it felt. Not in a bad a way. Bit. Like, it, it, yeah. it just, just because, like, you have this escalation that kind of, that kind of builds up. Yeah. But, like, why were the two guards in the front just didn't already have blasters? <laughs> Are they, like, the, the, the least, least cool out of the set? Yeah. <laughs> Listen, guys, we only got well, 20 see, blasters. They did have blasters because you can see that when, he, when, when, uh, when Din literally, like, front kicks the one into the pit, as the dude is falling, he tries to, like, reach for a blaster. Oh. He's trying desperately to get anything off of these dudes. He remembers, and oh, he, the he blaster. Can, <laughs> he's like, oh, no. Oh, I got to do it the hard way again. Should have led with that. Guard duty means you don't get jetpacks. Why are there holes here, then? <laughs> <laughs> I, w- I would have loved it too if, like, you know, R five is like opening the stuff, and then the little uh, what are the what are the robots called? Oh, the, the little droids? mouse droids. Mouse, mouse droids. Yeah. I was joking that those are like the Wi Fi routers for the station. <laughs> they just troll. If he came up and he hit a button, <laughs> it like opened all of them. I, I did like the oh. um, that the mouth the mouse droids had like l- little police, police lights. lights. Yeah. <laughs> what? Like, I'm gonna get my friends. What are y'all gonna do? <laughs> stare at you menacingly. We're going to nudge you gently about it. Yeah. And he's just like, I'm just going to fly well, away. Also, he rockets off and knocks one of them off the cliff. Like, no, I regret everything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, I had a, I had, oh, I, we were also hoping that maybe there'd be a moment where uh, Den kicks one of them back into one of the, the gates that have already been opened. He's just like, R5, close gate four. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We we're like close it on him. Close that it on would him. have been that would have been so much better than watching them just sort of harmlessly bounce off of it. Well, like go, yeah. think back again. Go all the way back to season, season one, right? One, His very one. first bounty. Yeah, yeah. like mm-hmm. like that would have been a cool callback if they had put that in. Mm-hmm. Honestly, yeah, yeah, yeah. and that, like uh, and since we're kind of moving moving along in a linear path here in this hallway, mm-hmm. um, then we get into like the clone 
um, the clone section where he was, you know, obviously Moff Gideon is trying to imbue the Force with his clones yeah. and stuff like that, which was I, I thought was a really cool callback to uh, essentially Dark Force's Jedi Outcast, which was the Shadow Troopers mm-hmm. um, from the game, which is one of my, it's definitely my favorite Star Wars game, hands down, mm-hmm. uh, or video game. And it was really cool that they were kind of implementing that because, like, even when we started walking into that, I mentioned, I was like, this is just straight out of Jedi Outcast. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, yeah. and, and that was before. Before we even found out that they were shadow troopers so i was like oh yes this is what i want right here <laughs> this is it <laughs> and then the convenient self-destruct button yeah well you know it has no password on it <laughs> just no push need. the button it's just a, a literal button it's right there next to enter <laughs> yeah it's just <laughs> very just precarious. Be real careful about typos yeah yeah um and so that's when that was right after he reunited with grogu right yes yeah so we have the miraculous like grogu shows up grogu shows up mm-hmm. and then we, we never really get any kind of meat on the bone of, like, what he was planning to do necessarily with the clones, right? I mean, he just, uh, like, he just wants to create he, he an army. He just wants to create an army. Yeah, yeah. unstoppable, force, powerful army. So he's not he's trying to prolong himself. his own life no. or anything like that. Well, we haven't know? got, he could be, though. He could be, know. yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so, I mean, we've talked a lot about, you know, obviously, episode just like eight. this episode, see, or this episode. Mm-hmm. Nick, I'm curious about what your thoughts are as a very, probably the biggest Star Wars fan out of this, out of us four right now. Um, of the whole season, period. So, um, big picture overview, I would say, <clears throat> you know, like a like a real B minus. You didn't reach for the stars. You didn't fail me, super mu- uh, C plus, B minus, kind of what I would say. Yeah, you didn't you didn't take too many risks. Yeah. Um, the risks that you did take were so silly that I'm not going to bother to mention them, (laughs) but like, that's kind of what star Wars is, right? Like star Wars is star Wars is silly. Like someone thought it was a good idea to bring a gold plated Butler droid on a secret mission to a forest planet. Right. And they all had camo and the gold plated Butler droid didn't. Yeah. (laughs) Star Wars really always been though. <laughs> yeah, like Star Wars has always been kind of this way. So, like, I, I, whenever Star Wars does something that's like this doesn't make any sense, it's just at, like like Harrison Ford said, "Ain't that kind of movie, kid?" Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, and I, you know, it's funny whenever you whenever people bring up like C three PO being on Endor on a secret mission, like a secret infiltration mission, it's just hilarious because, like, one, why are you here? Because you have absolutely no to real it, purpose. It interface with the natives. But that's the thing. Yeah, he's literally only there to befriend the Ewoks. <laughs> Which turns out to be no, pretty clutch. Not befriend. I mean, it does. Become yeah. their god. <laughs> <laughs> Get it right. Put respect that's on true. C-3PO's name. <laughs> yeah. He's a god. But I, 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 that's I, true. He did violate the prime directive. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I, I do pretty much agree, though. I think this is very much like a B-minus season, I think, yeah. especially compared to the other two, mm-hmm. which I vaguely, I think I remember liking season two better than season one of Mando, mm. but I haven't seen season one of Mando in a long time. Right. Yeah. I, it does Season feel- two just ends on such a huge emotional punch with, like, yeah. Oh, holy yeah. crap they brought they brought back luke full power luke skywalker yeah. and like this season uh, the reason it's like c plus b minus is i i feel like obviously they had to work in some ranges of the republic stuff i'm pretty sure that like the moff gideon stuff is all ranges of the republic yeah I they would set agree. up they set up this like mando like bo katan versus armor thing all season and then the last two episodes are like well actually it's gideon and so well, i feel yeah. like we were kind of teased. yeah. I feel like those were those were those were Rangers of the Republic thing, mm-hmm. and then um, it just it 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 works without it, but it could have worked better. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we were kind of teased throughout the season that there was like a spy within the Mando Coven, and so like you know people were like, "Well, is it going to be you know the armor? Is yeah. it going to be axe? Is it going to be you know the heavy?" And then the answer is it's it's no one, and we've kind of forgotten that there might have been a spy. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Because like whenever whenever Axe gets up to the ship and he's like, "Hey, everyone, you go. I'll handle this." Right. And then I was like, "Oh, th- he's the spy." Well, Even though it's it's like the most obvious choice, and then it's like, right. "Oh, well, he's not the spy." Same thing for the yeah. end of, of episode yeah. He, seven. Then he wasn't the spy, and then I expected. I was like, "Oh, tension! Someone might actually die," and then that also didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. but at the end of um, 
episode seven too with the armorer taking the wounded up, right? He's yeah. Like, oh, she's the mm-hmm. traitor. This is her. Yeah. Her end. This is where like she's gonna trade. turn. Yeah. Nope. No, she's just totally. Everyone's good here. We're all on the same side. How do they have all this information? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, well, unless like you know, she's such a deep plant that, or, or it's just some random she red shirt know man she's there a in the background. <laughs> For, for me, I think my problem with this season, and the reason I would also give it like a B minus, C plus, or whatever, is like, at least from what I recollect from the first two seasons, I feel like the the mission statement of what they were trying to do in that season was a lot easier to understand and mm-hmm. an easier through line to follow. Whereas like, this season starts off a and little you're nebulous. Like, okay, I guess what they're gonna do is try to get back to Mandalore. Oh, we got there in like episode two. Okay, um, well, and then it's like, like every little side quest they open up at the front of this season. I thought, okay, this could be w- which one of these is gonna be the nugget that like mm-hmm. goes throughout the whole season, mm-hmm. and it was none of them. They had everything wrapped up after like yeah, like three or four episodes. Three or four episodes, and that's when I was kind of it, it got to me. The season got a little aimless because it kind of felt like another bunch of side quests. And then when we finally start to kind of like focus in on what they're they're trying to do, uh, to me it got better. But I don't know. What do you guys think? Uh, that's that's kind of what I was getting at with the the emotional impact of the ending of season two. Yeah. Is that like this season really feels like it had to stand on its own. It wasn't going to get that ninth hour, you know, hero save by Mm -hmm. oh my god i can't believe they brought back this character i can't believe they did that Mm kind of had to stand on its own and it's just a tiny bit weaker for it yeah well and i feel like they they made up for some of the lack of like character development for you know din with like uh bo katan yeah right and i liked a lot of the stuff they did with that but there were there were just multiple episodes where like specifically the jack black lizzo episode where it felt like three mini episodes stuffed into one. You had like the, the, you know, law and order part in the middle Mm -hmm. on the outskirts. You had the stuff about her and the Mandalorian Merc. She was trying to get back. Then you have the Alice in Wonderland section with, you know, Jack Black and Lizzo. And then (laughs) it just felt to me like any one of those could have been fine. If that was the episode episode. instead, Mm -hmm. it was like a bunch of different conflicting tones and and stories put in one. And I know I kind of mentioned this on whenever we did our reaction for that specific episode. I know a lot of people hated it for whatever reason. I actually really would have loved to see like a like maybe a two or three episode arc that was obviously well written and, and yeah. thought out of like Bo and Din kind of doing this like uh, good, good cop, good cop, bad, bad cop, cop yeah. kind of like I'd be down for that. Yeah, you know, thing as long as it was relevant of like oh you know like there's this cloning you know like this you know cloning technology or something like that that we need to find out because it has a, a lead to Moff Gideon right or you know something like that. And they're having to go through this, and that would be really fun because I love that dynamic. Yeah, the dynamic worked. Yeah, the it dynamic just worked. I wanted more from it, and yeah, the whole episode should have been that, or like you say, a few episodes. Yeah, but yeah um, I, I would also weigh in here and say that the B minus C plus feels about right. Uh, I think part of the problem is what Ryan when we kind of mentioned it too, like episode one, episode episode two is like, oh, we laid out all these threads, and they immediately were resolved. Mm-hmm. And then it's kind of felt like, well, then what are, what are we supposed to do? What are we doing? And then you hit like episode three where you have the Coruscant stuff, which was good and probably could have just been its own episode in a separate show. Yeah. Bookended by this uh, in atmosphere space battle fight mm-hmm. with Bo and Den and the Interceptors, right? Yeah. And it's so like that felt like an awkward kind of mismatch of an episode. And then kind of the same same drill where you have like just kind of this like episode four is fine. We have this kind of run of like episode three, episode six, where they just kind of felt put together from other material. Kind well, of I, I together. think the the problem is that like the the constituent parts didn't inform anything about the other. Yeah, they don't a, mesh. A lot of times yeah. when shows do that, it's, and they have, it's absolutely it's absolutely that episode of Friends, the Thanksgiving episode where Rachel makes the English trifle that has a different recipe in the middle. Oh yeah, which I have eaten. It's disgusting. Uh, <laughs> Can confirm. But like, terrible. even even if you're working through this really wonderfully crafted, well crafted dessert, and you get to that layer of like beef sauté with peas and onions, even if you get a big mouthful of that, and it's a thing that you enjoy, you know it shouldn't be there. Right. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. So so kind of speaking of things that shouldn't be there, I have a I have a theory, working oh theory boy. here, that um, life is a simulation, and we're all. <laughs> <laughs> so at the end of season two, um, Mando, you know, obviously Luke takes Grogu, and they go mm-hmm. off to do the, the the Jedi training thing and everything like that, yeah. and it, it feels like a very emotional moment, just because you know we we've grown to love Grogu at this point, mm-hmm. and we're sad to see him and and Jin, but you know, get split, yeah, split up. Yeah. Yeah. And what I think happened or what I feel happened was um, the showrunners for season three had basically written out this entire thing where Grogu was not in it and mm-hmm. it was going to be the Din and Bo show. And that is totally fine. Um, and then some executive was like, whoa, 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 why isn't he in this? Mm-hmm. You know, and they're like, well, because, you know, blah, 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 blah. These are the reasons why. And we'll bring it back season four. You know, and that kind yeah. of thing. Because or maybe it, the finale of season three. Yeah, is yeah, or something like that. that. He, yeah. he yeah. comes in because in, in this episode, these past two episodes actually made a little bit more sense with that kind of in mind. So we'll keep going here. Mm-hmm. And then we have, um, you know, we're like, well, we have Book of Bubba Fett coming back. And we want Grogu in every single episode of Mando season three because that's what people want. So we got to get it. So we got, we have to get it in. Show me the baby. You know, so they, (laughs) show me the baby. (laughs) They, they wrote basically, you know, two episodes in for Grogu to come back Mm -hmm. in book of Boba Fett, which are already hijacking another show. Right. And then they're like, well, now we have to rewrite some scenes because we're, we've already written out the whole show, budgeted out that kind of thing. We have to write Grogu in. He feels a little bit like a handbag, essentially up until episode seven and eight where he has a pretty a real like reason to be there. Well, once yeah. he gets Mecha Grogu, yeah. he's, he's less and, and, of and just a burden. Yeah, and you have the, like, where he actually felt like a character in these two episodes because they meant for him to be here for these two episodes. Mm. And it it definitely felt like this season, up until these past two episodes, like he just wasn't supposed to be here. Yeah. And, and they just wrote him in to be just a handbag. I, uh, that's just my thought. I don't know if I'd go that far, but I, I agree with what you're saying in that, like, it did feel like his purpose in this series, in this season, well, basically, wasn't, like, fully realized until towards the end. I mean, now that we know that R5 has rocket boosters, the his Den's accompaniment to explore Mandalore the first time could have just been R5. He could R5 go get help, and R5 could just rocket it back up to the <laughs> right. N1 and flown out. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, he, so, he, obviously, Gregor didn't have to be there for that. He had fuel limitations at that point. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Don't. But later... He did. No fuel no. limitations. I think too. The Mandalorians me, all discovered an infinite fuel hack in between episode yeah. five and eight. Obviously, yeah. <laughs> up down, um, up down, left right, left right, A B A B plus. I think right. the the swamp thing, Rick James pirate whole tirade we went on there too was like mm-hmm. not developed enough for me. Like it, it could have probably it used been, one more it been episode. I think. Yeah. yeah. Like again, a lot of that stuff felt like these are these are interesting episodes that happened, and maybe you know I haven't watched all of Clone Wars or Rebels, and how Dave, Dave Filoni was you know really big in that. Like maybe that's a, le- a hold other from his style of writing on that kind of stuff of like so kind of pocket episodes that like don't necessarily push the needle forward. You know what I'm saying? Interestingly enough, looking up stuff for season three, mm-hmm. Filoni did not write most of the, the season. Most of it is Favreau. Uh, oh, yeah, it is, collaborating yeah. with somebody else whose name I've already forgotten, and then Filoni worked with them on two episodes. I think was he a executive producer? Or I, I mean, he's he still involved. Yeah, I mean, yeah. but I, it's not as much at the writing stage. So yeah. I don't know if that is. Filoni is like see. second or third in command of all of Lucasfilm at this point. Yeah, he's right, a big yeah. he's a big head honcho at this moment. Uh, he he stays way more on the creative side than like Kathleen Kennedy does, but he is he is uh, like second or third in command of Lucasfilm. Yeah. Is he the one that wears the cowboy hat? Yes. He yes. is. Yes. Okay. Which, uh, it does feel... <laughs> well, I wear the cowboy hat. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of creative control, when I, it does feel like we have entered... We, we already referred to the movie as capping off the Mandoverse. We have entered the uh, Star Wars cinematic universe that is going to connect uh, us back to the sequels and justify them or whatever. Fix the Fix the problems on the way. Uh, so these are costing Disney. Presumably. Presumably. Well, that's the goal, right? <laughs> One there there, think, there are some things in the sequels you can't fix. I don't think they've said that. <laughs> yeah. But so the Mandalorian on average, right, has been about a $13 million an episode budget. Mm-hmm. Okay? And obviously they're not really a um, box office to go off here, right? We, when we get this movie, we'll have a box office to talk about. But they're paying a lot of money 
right now mm-hmm. to connect us all the way out to the sequels. And then obviously we've got Ahsoka coming. We're, we're bringing Thrawn back, right? Mm-hmm. Where do we think this is going to start going from here? Like how, how do we get there? How are we bridging that gap? <sighs> we've introduced the Shadow Council. So we know Pelion's there. We know Thrawn's out. Like, mm-hmm. like that already connected it to Ahsoka, right, at that right. point. We know uh, Father Hux is out there. Yeah, so that gets us to the first, the formation of the first order at some point, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, and if it's only like twenty-ish years away, like it, there's not a big gap that you can f- fill that you do, that you have to fill in. But I mean, I mean, we had like three different TV shows that filled it in the thirty-year gap from Revenge of the Sith to New Hope. Is that wait three Clone yeah. Wars Rebels and or. Andor, thank you. <laughs> wow, Ooh, you know, the one we just watched. What if, got what it. if I just forget the best piece of Star Wars made <laughs> <Yeah>. recently? Oh. <laughs> well, and like, hmm, I don't know where they're gonna go because this had such a, a bow on the end of it, wrapped up ending for like like a series finale that like there's really well, short of like one of the you know wet wiggly clones of Moff Gideon surviving or he <laughs> himself out. surviving. Right, like that—that that, that could be a driving force in the next season. Well, now um, we did. Have... Well, now see, they mentioned in episode seven, Project Necromancer. Right, mm-hmm. obviously that does not refer to Gideon. Gideon was alive at that point. Right. Who's the biggest person who's dead? Who we might need to imbue with force powers? Somehow the emperor. It's the emperor. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. we're going to answer the somehow he returned line eventually. Yeah. That's kind of where this is going. Is we're going to figure out where Snoke came from. I'm pretty sure Snoke is just a, a one of the noodley clones. A failed clone. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty uh, sure Snoke, he's just going to be a, a, a Gideon. That's where the scars came well, from. But, so the whole thing, well, like, I, and, I, and I remember whenever, um, uh, I remember, like, in Force Awakens, whenever mm-hmm. Leia is basically talking about how Ben, um, you know, basically got turned to the dark side from Snoke, mm-hmm. where she, the way she talked about him, it felt like he was a, a big prominent figure in the, um, in not the resistance, um, New Republic, New Republic. Yeah. I need well, to start like with he was an a known person. Yeah. yeah. Like he, like, like it was like a very Palpatine esque thing where he was this trusted dude that just turned him. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, you know, it, it's one of those things where it's like, if it's, if he's going to be a failed clone, then I'll be curious at how they kind of fit him into the New Republic kind of thing where right. like, uh, but we we know now that he was a clone. It's like he, or at least that one was a clone. Well, and also we keep saying that you know this finale kind of had a bow on it, but we definitely got a piece of where it's going to go from there with hunting Din, down Imperial remnants, right? Going and talking to yeah. I keep forgetting his name, but the, the uh, New the Republic captain pilot, yeah, and saying, hey, you know, like like I'm going to work for the New Republic on a contract basis to help you help hunt down Imperial. Well, remnants out here so yeah. there's also nothing saying that like okay so we have ahsoka coming out later mm-hmm. this year and is it later this year oh it is yeah, yeah. Wow. When, whenever ahsoka, is it august yeah yeah august. whenever yeah. ahsoka Pipe? ends that could be the the resurgence of thrawn and heir to the empire whatever you want to call it mm-hmm. and now we go into season four of mandalorian where all these events have already taken place from ahsoka and he's and like he's thrawn like is running the now around big bad guy trying to put out put out fires of all these imperial uprising yeah. kind of things yeah, yeah. and, and that, that's kind of where i would imagine it would go because yeah. clearly they've already written out at least this first season of Ahsoka to where, you know, Thrawn's yeah, going to be the big bad guy coming back. And so with that, I bet that's kind of where this next season is going to go with Mando is that it's really going to start tying into all of these different these different series because you need to have, especially whenever you get to the film, you need to have all of these things in place, kind of like Endgame was with, with um, Avengers. I, I agree with that assessment, uh, Andrew. I think uh, Mando season four is going to be a stealth uh, Rangers of the Republic season two. <laughs> yeah, most likely. Yeah, <laughs> which like it should be fine if you if you give Din his his blaster to give Din his weapons back, uh, then it should be fine. Watching him do gunslinger stuff is always fun. Yeah, so like that yeah. that that will never get boring to me. Yeah, no. so I have got no problem with him traipsing around the outer rim, the unknown region. And just blasting fools. That sounds great. Well, I guess that's, um, yeah. This season didn't really feel that much like a western, like some of the other seasons have. It felt nothing like a western. Yeah, <laughs> honestly, it was, no, it it was anti-western. It was very anti-western. anti-western. I, I yeah. appreciate that because it means we moved away from sand. Sure, but <laughs> we didn't go back to Tatooine <laughs> for the fifth time. 
I'll definitely say that about this season. We got some really cool new locales that had nothing to do with sand. Or, mm-hmm. or we saw, you know, like Coruscant, which we haven't seen a ton of, and it looked good, right? It, did. it, it looked, looked really interesting. Good. Well, so, okay, have they said for sure they're doing a season two of Book of Boba Fett? Uh, they have not announced. They have not, right? So, like, <laughs> they what, what I'm celebration just like, happened and no one was talking about Book of Boba Fett. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, probably good reason. Looking at the roadmap, right, of in between, because, you know, Andor season two won't have anything to do with this. Yes, it's different correct. Timeline. It's, it's like, totally different. Yeah. Looking at the shows that could, you know, play into the Mandalorian season four to kind of get an idea of leading up to this big Mandoverse mm-hmm. movie, right? Obviously, Ahsoka. Yeah. Probably season four of Mandalorian. Mm-hmm. Season two of Ahsoka, presumably. Yeah. Presumably, yeah. Right? And then nothing from Book of Boba Fett, right? <laughs> I mean, yeah. probably. I mean, they could, like for Mando season four, they could bring Boba Fett back in, mm-hmm. kind of like he was. Yeah, it's uh, way, way more likely that Boba's going to guest star yeah. Yeah, yeah, instead have of own, have his own yeah. show. Din, Din needs more muscle in his hunt, or Boba is hunting Imperials on his own because they interfere with Tatooine or something. I don't know. Yeah, see, I, can, I can handle that. I, yeah. I'd much rather not have no, no, a season no, two. No, no, see, see what, what you're going to have is... Boba brought his own muscle, and it's the biker gang. Oh, oh no. gosh. <laughs> and then they fight the pirates, and they say avast. And <laughs> well, so here's a question, too, um, with, oh, my gosh. I just, like, I had it, and then uh-huh. you distracted me with Vespa. Avast. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, um, uh, but, yeah, I was going to ask something about Book of Boba Fett. Okay. But I something got about now. the end of it? No, or? I got nothing now. It's uh, over. Yeah, it's over and done. Just cool. forget it. Okay. All right, well, I can't. So uh, Ahsoka is going to be basically well. Rebels season five, right? So right. Yeah. Uh, Ahsoka shouldn't have too much to do with much of anything happening in the Mandoverse right now. Yeah. Right. Um, it's going to be it's going to be a girl's road trip. Her and Sabine are going to go, and it's going to be. Harris R- is road, it's gonna be a road trip right? movie essentially, okay. which, which is which is great. Yeah, which I'm I'm really excited for mm-hmm. one because I Ahsoka is one of my favorite characters. Um, just out of you know most of the um, you know I guess like the Star Wars secondary characters that aren't like the original trilogy cast. Yeah, but then you also get Thrawn, which I'm a big heir to the Empire fan from you know the 90s. Mm-hmm. So that's gonna be really exciting. Um, and, you know, I know he, he is in there in Rebels, but it's one of those things that it's going to be a whole different kind of experience, I think, when it's in live action. Yeah, oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, when he's tactile, it's when he's like an actual like when thing that you can reach out and touch, touch, it's for sure going to feel. Because like Rebels has this uh, issue with its character models. They're all a little Gumby-like. Yeah. Um, yes. <laughs> and so they, they feel... Like it's a little uncanny valley, not not yeah. never enough that you can't connect with them emotionally, but enough that it's like, ah, oh, you're not a real thing, right? <laughs> well, and they've got uh, Lars Mikkelsen, Mads Mikkelsen's yeah. brothers Which playing is a Thrawn. good casting, a fantastic yeah. casting, yeah. yeah. So like, I'll be excited to see what I, he does. I personally was hoping for Jason Isaacs. Jason, but, I, I have to look him up. Hold on. Um, continue. Uh, he is uh, Draco Malfoy's dad. In Harry Potter. Oh, oh yeah. He's also oh, in the Patriot. Yeah, uh, he'd be a good choice. Oh, you're right. Yeah, he's uh, Taffington in uh, in the Patriot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that would be yeah. a good choice. He's a great villain. In Jason that. Isaacs would have been really good. He voiced yeah. the Inquisitor in Rebels. So I'm not sure how much they want to double dip on that. Uh, yeah, that's bad. Yeah. yeah. Could be. Yeah, I don't know. But yeah, so like that's kind of – I do think that with, with Ahsoka, like I don't think that we're going to deal with the Thrawn threat in one season. And no, I think no, way. no, absolutely not. Ahsoka's, uh, they might find like Ezra. Yeah. Um, which is like part of the whole thing. <clears throat> I like, like, but I fully expect maybe. the, I fully expect like the Mandoverse movie to have its own little end game scene where you get like Ahsoka, Ezra, yeah. Luke, and Grogu all like lightsabered up together. Oh, that'd be Ooh, so cool. That would be pretty cool. Yeah. If they got their own little like yeah, moment hero moment. shot. Cause yeah. like the, the, that, that movie should happen well before the fall of nukes, uh, Luke's new Jedi order. Yeah. So like, yeah. if you get, give me, show me like one moment of like yeah. just Luke and like six of the best Jedi who are alive. At the moment. Yeah, yeah, like, man, oh, that would be put, so cool. Put Mecha Grogu back in there. He's got a gun. He's just pressing yes, 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 He's yes. in, like, General Grievous's body. He's got, like, the six <laughs> yeah. Oh, So do we think there will be even a cameo of Mando in Ahsoka Season 1? I'm sure. I'm sure it'll uh, show up. Maybe. But, you I think mean, so? Maybe. I don't know. I will, it's, okay. If nothing yeah. else... For a budget thing, because you're not paying Pedro to show his face on screen, it's real mm-hmm. cheap to do, right? Mm-hmm. So, 
Nick, you had didn't something. show his face a single time this season. Yeah, it's, <laughs> real, it's a real cheap budget. He, he was very much a voice actor this season. Yeah. 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 Well, we saw yeah. uh, he still get, did good. The, <laughs> we saw the two um, the two actors who are in the suit. Is it Brendan Wayne and Latif Crowder? I think. Correct. Are, Correct. Are the two actors, and they were credited as kind of like co stars of being Den this season. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, pre- presumably because you know Pedro was off uh, doing The Last of Us at the same time, which does require mm-hmm. his face. A it lot. requires quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and he's got another season of that coming up, so you know we'll see how that goes for uh, how much Pedro we can get in uh, Star Wars. Well, hi- yeah. I mean, hypothetically, I mean, because we don't know exactly when that season's going to come out, and we also don't really know when season four yeah, of Mandalorian is going to come out. Schedules yeah. run. Yeah. So you know, there, it's all very nebulous and and that kind of thing. I mean, because clearly, like you know. He, Jin back in in Mando Mando verse he is very much drinking the Kool Aid of don't take off the helmet. Yeah, the helmet's ever again. on. Right. Firmly. I've been yeah. in Napa State once. I don't want to be it again. But like, right. they, they, they can live on Mandalore. You could take you know like if the Redemption is bathing in the living waters, bro. Every one of you could just take your helmet off and then put it back on and go down. The <laughs> yeah, basement. man, that's a day trip now. Yeah, well, just go have a sauna. That's just that, a couple like, of flights of steps. You got a rocket pack. Everybody's on, like, just laying in that yeah. pool with the helmet off. Like, what are you gonna do? Like, I'm bathing <laughs> right now. Like, just gotta stand up, put my helmet on. I'm good. Well, <laughs> Armor is just losing her mind. You just yeah. You just take your helmet and dunk it in the water and put it on. Be like, hey, it's all from. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, actually, since we're since we're talking about the the waters, right? Um, I, obviously, you know they showed the the mythosaur one more time. Yeah. Uh, at this, and I don't know if that's going to be you know any other you know kind of hint at anything, or if that's just like it really was the mythosaur because you did get to see its horn a little right. bit. Yeah. Well, and then they what? immediately gave you a shot of the logo afterwards. Yeah, they're like really hammer yeah. it home. Yeah. You know? Get it. And also, Grogu either was aware of the mythosaur or he's, was he's commuting, commuting with, it. with it. Like, yeah. I couldn't tell what that scene was exactly He wanted to trying. eat it. Yeah, I was like, he you know, did. Gro- what Grogu was doing, he's like, I feel living down there. It's big. I can't eat it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Now, if it's a frog, though, that's going right in my belly. But, yeah, I, I wonder if that will actually come into play in the next season or if it was just kind of like you are saying, just like a, see, it was there. Yeah. But, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I don't – it's hard to tell because, like – Mandalorian culture has so many like symbols of power and authority. Yeah. That's just like the dark saber is like, say, if you speak, have this, you're in charge. And like whoever of, can ride a mythosaur is in charge. Yeah. Speaking of so, like, the dark saber has been broken now. So it has, I'm very happy that happened. Yeah. I mean, well, you know, he also broke Bo's hand in the, in the process. Every bone in her hand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That did happen. That it was, was that was brutal. Yeah. It was yeah. brutal. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, sorry. So, what were you going to say, Nick? I just I'm I'm so happy that the dark saber is gone. I do not like the concept of a Mandalorian Jedi. It's just yeah. such such middle school fanfic god tier <laughs> writing. Now, did that come from Rebels or was that in Clone uh, that was Wars? Clone Wars? Was it Clone Wars? Clone Wars. Clone Wars did it first. They um, yeah they they came out with it first. Gotcha. Which you know like. I don't know what season it came out in for Clone Wars or whatever, but I, I do kind of agree. It always felt like like they don't need a lightsaber. They got like all the little tools and the flamethrowers. And well, all like, the fun that's stuff. again, that's the point. That's yeah, the, the fun, the uniqueness of the Mandalorian is it like they don't have lightsabers. Yeah, they don't yeah. need them, and you know, and then they had to give them any, give them one anyways. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, oh man, see, I had something else, I had another question that I was going to ask, but you I write got nothing these now. Down. I should. I don't, <laughs> I don't have any notes. I'm just going off my, my noggin over here. And your noggin, as we can tell, is unreliable. It's unreliable. Yeah, very unreliable. It's very yeah. unreliable narrator over there. <laughs> well, I mean, on that note, it does kind of sound like we're, we're winding down a little bit here, unless anyone's got anything else to throw in there from you know Andrew, Ryan. So does anybody have a favorite moment from this season? Mm. Ooh. I think they're pretty much all going to come from either this episode or last episode. No, no I, honestly, I, I'll go first. I, okay. okay, yeah, go first. My, I think my favorite moment from this season is going to be putting Grogu into Mecha Grogu and just that the, was pretty good. Yes, 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 yes. As he's walking, where he's just like, "This is so awesome." It's, it's the Grogu Gundam. Yeah, my, mine was definitely the the in atmosphere dogfight. 
I feel like that was good. oh yeah, that in episode was good. three. Yeah, yeah. That that was probably for me the highlight of um, at least the action for me. That was like mm-hmm. just a fantastic sequence. So I have to. I go. will. I will. Oh, go ahead. I'll be the simp here. Uh, anything that Bo Katan did, please there it and is. thank you. There it is. <laughs> please and thank you, there Yas Queen. Yas Queen. <laughs> uh, so, well, so I'm gonna I'm gonna pretty much piggyback off of that. Um, really, I. Like, despite not being able to see all of the action in the air for this past episode, I mm-hmm. really did like the um, the in-air jetpack battle. They I had, thought that was they really had cool. Some good pieces and of that. Uh, seeing Bo Katan like like slide off of a platform only to like to to basically catch these two guys that were chasing her like under under their noses. Man, that was so cool. Well, yeah. I mean, we made fun mm-hmm. of them, right? Where they were having that in city fighting on Navarro and they're like, We're surrounded. Like, you're wearing jetpacks. <laughs> <Yeah. Like, laughs> what do you mean you're surrounded? You could you move in three dimensions. But seeing them actually use it at, to the fullest extent, right? Like yeah. with mostly with Bo because she is the actual you know, most of <laughs> the let's be honest, the the armorer's cult, their idea of training was we'll go outside and shoot the lake for like ten minutes and then, and, and then good, have, right? have a kid <laughs> like, kidnapped to like yeah. you know. <laughs> so it's yeah, like she's kind of really you, which part of the lake were you aiming at? That, okay, then you hit it. Yeah, yeah cool. perfect. 100% accuracy. Yeah. Uh, but she's kind of styling on them here because she's seen a lot of fighting and used these tools yeah. for so long. And yeah, mm-hmm. that that bit where she just drops down, slides, and uses it for cover and then pops back. Oh, that was great. Yeah. The, um, the other thing that I really liked about, um, I, like, they definitely really went hard on, like, the, the Mando combat with this mm. um not with jen not with Din, but like with mm. everyone else you know because yeah. they they did start finally using all their tools again yeah um you know they they did actually learn that when they're running through a hallway you can leave you can put g- explosives <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> i know i was like oh there they are there that's where they were last episode it's like somebody was <laughs> reaching their pocket oh 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 oh, oh. <laughs> beep 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 yeah. <laughs> I left him at home, but I didn't. Yeah. Uh, well, my uh, my final thought: um, uh, justice, justice for the Fang Fighters. They showed up in two episodes and didn't fight a single interceptor. <laughs> okay, so so Nick, all, like way back. Oh, somewhere between episode five and episode six, I got a spoiler of a Lego set, right? And people were mm-hmm. speculating that it was spoilers for the finale because the set was Fang Fighter versus Tie Interceptor. And it had Den's minifigure in there, and he's wielding the dark saber. And so people were like, "Holy crap! Like, <laughs> like they're gonna have this big aerial We've battle." And I was like, "Man, did I just get spoiled that he's gonna get the saber back?" And that didn't happen. So I'm I'm happy that it wasn't spoilers. But yeah, it, I'm happy. I'm happy that you weren't spoiled. But uh, there there are there are a lot of things I liked about this season, and then there are things that weren't. Fang fighters fighting intercept. Well, they yeah. just, it's opportunity cost, right? There could have been so much more. Like Ryan's highlighting the dogfight in episode three. Imagine yep. if we had the really good ground battles with the jetpack fight, and somewhere in between that, we had gauntlets and fang fighters ripping up with tie bombers and tie interceptors. Oh, that would have been good. Uh, especially yep. like dipping yeah. in yep. and out of the storm clouds and stuff. Ugh. And, you know, yeah. and I'll, I'll say it again. Imagine uh-huh. all of that, but with, with John Williams John music. Williams music. Williams music. Yeah. John Williams music. I will say, I will say my actual final thought. I would die to hang out in that fighter, fighter jock bar. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Best I would die to hang out in that bar. I mean, you know, give, give galaxy's edge, you know, another decade and maybe that'll be one of the bars in there. Yep. Dude, that'd be cool. That would be cool. Yeah. All right. Well, on that note, I do believe that is all the time we have for this episode. So I want to thank Nick here for joining us and, and adding to our uh, elevating our general Mandalorian and Star Wars knowledge for the episode. Thank you, Nick. Yeah, thanks, Nick. Absolutely. Thanks, you guys, for having me. Definitely. But until next time. Well, hold on. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, we hold need to on. Shill. We have to shill. We have to shill. This is still an episode. <laughs> <laughs> you forget yourself, sir. All right. So. so now that we've kicked the guest off, if you liked what you heard <laughs> and you want to support the show for the low, low price of $1 a month. That's can, one American dollar. And Patreon will convert foreign currencies. It will. Yes. It nice. sure will. Never mind. It's just $1. <laughs> <laughs> Or ten kroner, I think, is what I've seen from one of the other one of the patrons we have. Nice. But 
if you want to support the show, one dollar a month gets you guaranteed one bonus episode every month, plus access to all of our prior bonus episodes. Guys, you want to tell them what they're missing out on right now? Oh man, you could just be listening to us deciding if um, old presidents can beat us up or we could beat them up. That's a fun one. Yeah. Um, I want to say the soda tier list is a good one too. You use the soda tier list every episode. You use the president's one every time. So okay, like, they're fine. fun. The, okay, the president's fine. episode was top tier. So <laughs> thank you, Nick. <laughs> it so was very good. He's we're, also a patron. Uh, yeah. No, we're going to talk about Star Wars tier list. Then we've we've, oh, yeah. we've listed all yeah. the existing Star Wars films, not TV shows or anything yeah. like that. Um, and that was a, a contentious episode. That was yeah. good. Another one we've done is the comfort food movies. Oh, we, we yeah, talk I like about that like one. stuff you can just watch whenever. That mm-hmm. was a good episode. Uh, actually, actually, while we're here, we have a little bit of a, a, a question here. Nick, what's your top comfort mo- comfort food movie? One of your top. You don't uh, don't yes. put them on the spot so here. It's, it's a movie that I will absolutely put on at any point any, in time. Any point any point point time. Yeah, doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, point Break. Point Break. There it is. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Shoot point Break. The air. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, it's one of my absolute favorite movies. I could watch that movie once a week for the rest of my life. I see you also are of Man of Culture. All right. <laughs> indeed. indeed. <laughs> well, if you don't have the dollar, we totally understand. We would love to uh, to have your support in other ways. Uh, if you want to, whatever you're listening to us on right now, we'll let you leave a review. Even Spotify, as we found out, you can at least give us a, a rating. Yeah. Uh, so if you have a moment, you want to leave us a review, we'd love that. If you want to reach out to us on socials, uh, we're on Facebook, we're on Instagram. Yep. Share uh, us around. Tell your friends. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And if you want to hang out with us, you know, talk about some stuff that isn't episode related, we have a Discord. Links that are on our website, spoilersintendedpodcast.com. Yep. We like to hang out there, talk about stuff that's, you know, not episode related, you know. Well, we're, we're talk, eating. Talking about hobbies, whatever, yeah. yeah. But we also have some episode discussions. We if do. You do want to, like, yeah, yeah talk or about New stuff movies, heard. stuff yeah. that we may or may not be covering. You never know. Mm-hmm. But... On that note, shill has been achieved. It is <laughs> that time because we are out of time. Until next time, <laughs> I'm Steven. I'm Andrew. I'm Ryan. And every spoiler was intended. <laughs> <laughs>